Hello and welcome to week six. For week six, the first thing that you're going to do is complete your reading assignment. When you click on the link to your reading assignment, you'll notice that you are reading chapter three, sections one through three, chapter eight, sections three, four, and seven, and chapter nine, sections two through eight in Let's Get Writing. You also have slide decks for writing an, I'm sorry, an argumentative essay. And you have um, two that focus in on our grammar and usage for this week, capitalization, punctuation, and modifiers, and parallel structure and irregular verbs. Remember, these slide decks are supplemental, but they are the kinds of notes that we would take if we were in a face-to-face -face setting. All right, and then you're going to do an MLA screenshot and uh, comments assignment. I really want you to just simply reacclimate to MLA format if it's been a while or get you know get a good glimpse of it if you've never seen it before so what you're going to do and I suggest you do something like going to um, the Purdue University online writing lab the Purdue OWL if you simply put that into um, a Google search Purdue OWL um, MLA format you should you should be able to uh, you know get to these pages and so let's just say that I wanted to um, I wanted to just look at what an electronic source looks like when you're citing it. And I scroll down a bit and I think, you know what, I, I, I'm interested in a page on a website because I think I might use that at some point in my writing. So what you're going to do is you're simply going to take a screenshot of that. You're going to save that screenshot, paste it into either a Word document or a Google document or insert it. And then you're going to describe what you see in your own words. So for a page on a website, um, the citation starts with the author's last name, then first name. The title uses normal title capitals and quotation marks. The website is italicized. The URL is included without the HTTPS um, colon and slashes. And then there's a date of access. And that's mostly um, because sometimes online sources are updated or slightly changed or adjusted for new information. So we want to keep that data access um, handy. And then you simply add that you've gotten this particular citation from the Purdue Online Writing Lab. Um, and what you'll notice is um, there's an example of this, like I said. So um, you've got exactly what I've just walked us through, the 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 screenshot itself, and then the explanation in my own words. All right, and then you're going to upload that down here by Wednesday. So you've got a couple of days to get this done. It's it's pretty easy um, assignment, but you'll upload it there. All right, the next thing is project number three. And for project number three, what I want you to keep in mind is you've got quite a bit of time to get this, this all done. And that's because of the end of our semester and how we embed, uh, you know, holiday weekend. Um, we've got, you know, this, this is a shorter week. So we'll, we'll have plenty of time to work through this assignment and, and really make it a good assignment because it's a great transition to England, I'm sorry, English 1190. Um, so what I want you to keep in mind, same setup of the page. No cover page, you know, um, a heading, a header, um, your title. Uh, so in this argumentative paper, you want to think about how you're going to engage the interest of your readers. In your introduction, you're going to state your thesis, which is your argumentative stance that sets the tone for the paper. You want to think about not only what supports your argument as far as um, evidence, and uh, maybe evidence from the articles that you're going to pull from the outside. Um, but also you want to address the counter arguments. So you want to think about how you can acknowledge and refute the um, viewpoints of the opposition. So anyone who's, who's on the other side of that argument. And then you want to close in a way that convinces your reader that your position makes sense. It's worth considering. Um, and there are, you know, are different ways that you can leave the reader with an imp impression. As I said, you're going to have a minimum of two outside sources. We're going to work through that process as well. But you want to make sure that the information is carefully integrated and properly documented. And that's using MLA format. Just, you know, that's why I want you to get a glimpse of it, get an idea of some, some things you, you might end up using in your paper and describing those. So you can really um, be able to uh, integrate those citations according to format because you've seen it before and you know what it is. 
Then you've got 10 possible topics here. Um, you, it, it, you know, obviously it's not limited to these, but you're, um, you're welcome to, um, you know, look through them. They're all related to the state of Michigan. They're all, um, you know, things that we can think about in, in kind of arguing for the benefits for our own community, our statewide community. So I encourage you to read through those. Ask me questions if you have them. All right, and then going back, um, as I said, your MLA screenshot is due on Tuesday. Your discussion form number six is also due on Tuesday. And this is where you're gonna practice um, writing a counter argument. So you're gonna read this, um, this set of uh, short um, comments by experts, you know, about whether or not juveniles should be punished as adults. So then you're gonna take a side. And remember, you start in counterargument with the opposing viewpoint. So, for example, if you don't think juveniles should be punished as adults, you'll start with the people who do think juveniles should be punished as adults, and then you'll move your way to your side of the argument. So a lot of times people will start with some may say, and they'll get all of those reasons out, but you've got to have a transition to move it back over to your your side of the argument. So, you know, some may say, and you give that fair time and weight to the opposition, and then you've got that turning point, however, and then you you lay out your, your reasons um, in support of your thesis. So that is due on Wednesday as well. Um, so you've got two assignments due Wednesday, your MLA screenshot and comments, and your discussion form number six. Um, your topic and thesis assignment and grammar and usage checkpoint because of the holiday weekend are due on Monday at 11.59. So with your um, topic and thesis, and I'm just going to really quickly make sure I've got all the possible topics we just looked at. Um, I added a couple this semester. All right, so um, you've got 10 possible topics. Um, what you're going to do is, you know, this is a position paper. I want you to um, tell me what your overarching topic is for this assignment. So this can really just be, um, you know, a very brief paragraph describing the issue and funneling down to your position. So in many ways, think of this as an introductory paragraph. Give me what kind of background I need to know to understand the topic as a whole and then add your thesis statement. And typically that's the last sentence in the intro, but it doesn't have to be. You just wanna make sure that your argument is clearly stated um, in your, uh, you know, in, in this assignment. So that's gonna be about a paragraph. Think of it as an introductory paragraph. You're gonna funnel down from the, top, the general topic to the specific thesis. All right, and then finally your grammar, oops. Finally, your grammar and usage checkpoint is due. Let me get back to that. Your grammar and usage checkpoint is also due on Monday. If you have questions about these assignments over the course of the week, let me know.